Through the creation of Volume 1 and Volume 2, I've dabbled in adjustment layers. We've looked at levels adjustment layer and things like that. What are adjustment layers? Well, just to remind you, they're non-destructive layers where you can apply different settings and go in and re-edit them and manipulate them. They're really handy. Now, to get to adjustment layers, you can either go to the layer drop-down menu and go to new adjustment layer. Remember that also the new fill layer is also classed as an adjustment layer as well. So they're grouped in the same area down here in the actual layers palette. So there's your fill layers and there's the remainders of your adjustment layers. Now if we start off with a simple levels adjustment layer, knowing what you now know with levels in terms of making full control over it and using the different RGB composite layers, we can go in and edit this image here. So if we start off at the bottom, Command 3 or Control 3 with the blue layer. Now remember, if you actually dip in to the highlights, you're going to make things an awful lot more bluer, which you can maybe clip in a little bit. And if you work to the shadows, things are going to get an awful lot more yellow. So again, just be careful in your amount of control that you're actually applying in the colour effect. So if we go to around about there, and then we juggle to the green. Now with the green in this area, you're going to obviously make things an awful lot more magenta. And this can have the effect of actually darkening things off. So you probably want to play around with the, the mid-tone in this case. But I don't want to go too far in, but adding a little bit of magenta doesn't do any harm. Bring it to the edge of this histogram here. On the other opposite side, we're going to go to a sickly green now by adjusting the highlights. And this doesn't really suit what I'm aiming to do here. You can maybe tweak it in a little bit to work the trees up a little bit and this little bit of plant that's moving in the foreground here. But apart from that, you're not wanting to make any great changes. And then onto our reds, which obviously is our cyans. So if we adjust the shadow area, we're going to make things an awful lot more cooler. Some people would say this looks a bit more sort of realistic, a bit cold and yucky to me. So I would tend to just again work just to the slight edge of the histogram there and then decide with the highlight how much red's going to be applied in. Now you don't want it being too hot because this just kind of knackers your image. So again, just leaving that back here because there's plenty of pixel information at this area of the histogram here. So that's the sort of general adjustments between the two, or th three rather, separate uh, channels, we can then look at the actual composite area itself and then play about with the mid-tone. So we can choose just to brighten things up a little bit. But the great thing is, click OK and this is applied to an adjustment layer which you then have full control over. So for example you can adjust its visibility just to see the difference in what you've actually done and whether you have actually made any great, any great improvement to it or not. You can control its opacity here by just sliding the opacity slider using the scrubby slider. So for example, if we deliberately wanted to you know, show a bit more detail in here, we could actually you know, go in and brighten things up even more and then decide how much we wanted to pull it back on the opacity. And I'm not that fussed about that, so I'll just reset things back in the history a little bit. And you also have a layer mask in here which you can go in and edit up if you wish. So for example, if we wanted to juggle things back a little bit, and that then gives us that control, yep, that's looking good. We could then go in and take our paintbrush tool, black is our foreground colour, and we could then just work our way into the actual mask itself and rub out effectively any great adjustments. It's pretty weak just now. We'll just actually increase the opacity and you'll see the general difference. So we can actually rub in some of the original colour there and just sort of blend it off and mix it in as you can see here and then we could adjust the landscape area here and we made quite a big alteration to the blue so again you could work that off darken things off if you don't like what you've done then all you have to do is command or control and backspace and white being your background colour will then reset things you'll see a greater difference in applying actually a uh, layer mask or adjusting the layer mask in the, the adjustment layer itself later on when we go into apply hue and saturation. As I said, there's many other features to the adjustment layers and probably one of the more cooler features in terms of working on landscapes is to apply a photo filter. And this gives you the option of applying a filter similar to and obviously simulating the filters that you put in front of your camera when actually taking the shot in the first place. The only thing that it doesn't tend to do is actually a, ne a decent neutral density filter and that's why I created my grad pack actions for that. Um, generally speaking though these guys are quite good so for example we could go for the cooling 80 and just actually tone things down a little bit and you'll see that improve the blues in the skies. Or we could go for a straight violet just to uh, pump in a little bit 
more of sort of the magenta end of the scale or we could go back to one of the warming filters so for example just an 81 warming filter you can then decide on how much density of colour is actually being applied so if you increase the density things are going to get an awful lot more colour casted as you can see here so this is a great way of actually creating a sort of evening sunset shot even though this has obviously been taken probably in the middle of the day I like to set the density personally around about 30%. Now this little tick box down here, Preserve Luminosity, maintains basically the brightness of the image. If you have this unticked, then any changes you make with the photo filter will also darken the actual image off unless you have this ticked. If you don't want to stick with the actual custom presets and you want to do something that's original to yourself, you can go into the colours and actually then just choose with the colour picker basically any colour you want within the actual spectrum. So you have that option there as well. I'll just cancel out of it and you can obviously preview the effect on and off and all it's mainly done here is actually just reduce the blue in the sky and just warmed up the ground a little bit so if we click OK we can then play about with it so again you can choose the visibility switching it on and off deciding whether you want to keep it or you don't want to keep it as the case may be you can also control its opacity so if it's a bit too strong you can then use the opacity slider just to make things a little bit more transparent and see through and thus reducing the actual colour effect itself and for example if we wanted to warm up the land but keep the blue in the sky again we can use our paintbrush tool or set to airbrush mode as I've got here black is the foreground and then go back in and effectively paint out the warming effect in the sky but keep it for the mountain range and the valley in the sort of mid ground area and that's, you can see that's just roughly been done and again switch on the visibility on and off so there's before and there's after so we've got a slight warming effect happening in here if I actually go in and then increase the density you can see the overall effect and you can also see just in here where it's actually not being brushed out again toning it back to 30% is not just as noticeable and then leaving it like that so adjustment layers allow you to make non-destructive adjustments to your image as you can see here and we'll go into the other adjustment layers in the next tutorial